start recording it. Um, today, what I wanted to talk more about was um, was rings and repairs. Um, so you guys should have in your in your wax packs a little like a little chunk of a ring tube. You should be able to get at least two um, rings out of that. So I just wanted to start off with with how we're cutting it. So this is what it, it would look like if you bought it in, in, a, in a longer tube. You guys have got a little a little chunk. Um, for, for rings, I use my calipers and dividers a lot. Like these are my sort of key tools with this. Um, so say I wanted to make a, a five mil, five mil wide ring band, I would set my calipers to my five. So I've got them. And then and then I would use that to set my dividers right. I've got my dividers set to five mil. Then we want the what we want is for the the ring tube to stay as flat as possible so that we're not making squint rings if we didn't want squint rings. So I would just use the dividers to draw myself a guideline into the wax tube um, all the way around it. I'm just gonna scratch this in. there I've got my scratched guideline that I'm going to follow. So then I'll move on to my saw. Um, and the way that we're going to cut the, um, cut the ring tube is the same way I would cut a metal tube. Um, and that's uh, a little bit at a time from all directions. Keep keeping rotating the tube itself. Um, if I this basically this helps me make sure that I stay on my guidelines um, and that I don't cut it wonky. So I just keep spinning it round and cutting a cutting a little bit at a time to stay on track. that I can just go that way. And then I'll have my little my little ring slice that I can now um, do what I want with it. So the first the first thing that we would do once we've cut it off the off the tube is to size it. So we're getting the size first and we can do that most easily with this tool which is called a ring pourer. Um, basically it's got a, um, like a blade down the side of it. And what we do is we pop that in the middle so we can like take away the wax material to, to size it. So I'll grab, um, I'll grab this guy because it's a bit fatter, just the same. Um, and I pop it, pop it on the ring pourer and then I will, gently scoop it around to get the material out. So the material that's coming is, is really skinny, really small bits. Um, it's essentially like a giant pencil sharpener. So that's what we're doing with it. We'd also, what you do to one side, you would do again to the other. Keep flipping it so that we're not creating a tapered edge in the middle. Um, and 
it, it doesn't need, we don't need to press really hard. We just can be quite gentle with it. Um, we just want skinny bits to come off because if we're pressing too hard, the, it will sort of jump and make it all lumpy in the middle. We want it to be, we want it to be as smooth as we can get it. Um, so then to be checking that that is the right size, I would be using a, 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 a ring mandrel. So like, like this one has the sizes on, so I would pop it on and I can see that this is sitting at a size M at the minute. So I would keep checking it on a mandrel to see if it's the right size. Um, if you was making it for yourself, there's no reason why you can't just keep popping it on your finger to see if it's, if it's the right size. Um, yeah, so that's the, that I'd say is the, is the easiest way to size the ring. And like I say, you would size it first um, because if you were bringing down the walls in your design, making them like skinny like that guy, then um, if it wasn't sized correctly, then you wouldn't have enough wall room to, to make it the right size. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, the other way I wanted to say to you is if you, so if you had like, um, like a cylinder um, without the core from the middle, or if it was just the sheet, um, sheet wax or whatever it may be, if you found that this was too restrictive for you for being a ring and you wanted to make it out of something different with carving, um, the way you would do it is with the measurements of the, um, of the, of the ring size. So for example, um, if we were making this to be a size M ring, then I can see that the diameter of size M is 16.5. Um, so my half of that to get my radius would be about 8.2. So again, I'd get my calipers set it to 8.2. nearly 8.24 and then get my dividers and then in my cylinder or sheet or whatever it may be then I could use that to draw out a circle I would then drill a hole through that wax and then cut saw piece out from the middle to get to get the hole to be the right size. Um, so that's that's another way uh, that's another way that we could size size the rings. Have we got any questions where we're at there? No? Okay. So. Next, I wanted to talk about um, like joining together or repairing. Um, and that's where we would be using like the hot tools that we spoke about last week. So what I'm gonna do is use the spirit lamp mainly and a solder probe, because that's my personal preference. But also got all the dental tools here with the edges that they have they can help me with joining together um, again this is something that we might be using the a solder solder, solder and iron for that we can use um, or as I said before if you had the if you had the gas torch turned on but having a, a tiny little flame then you could use that to pop the tools in to get them hot to, to melt the wax. So I've got my ring and I've got a little crack in it. So I want to repair that. I don't know if we can see it very well. But um, what I've got here is um, a bit of scrap wax that has come off when I've been saw piercing. So I want to keep a hold of, of some of those pieces in case 
I need them. So I'm going to pop the uh, spirit lamp on. And I'm going to start off with the ring. So I've got my solder probe and I like this because it's got such a fine point on it with like ring repairs it can be handy because it can just give me a little bit more control I find. Um, I first of all want to try and tack this together So when, when I heat the wax, it, it obviously it melts and then it stays in that sort of melty state for a few seconds. So that's when you just you want to just hold it in that position. If you move it too quickly, then it's like going to just fall apart. It needs to, you need the wax to set again. Um, so if that's it's very slightly tacked together and then what I'll do is use use my scrap wax to pick up a blob of wax um, to build on top. So as we were saying, you, wax is much easier to take away the material than it is uh, to put material on. So like with the sizing a ring, you would you'd keep, you do a little bit and then you check it and then you do a little bit more and then you check it because if you took away too much, then it and it's harder to fix um but it's but we can pop material back on um so i like i say i'm melting a little bit and sort of scooping it and then placing it where i need it to like build build the layer back on So I can also go sort of poke through it again to make sure it's fully joined. It sounds like there's a lump on the top. So that when I when I when I'm at there, then I would be getting my file again and um, just sort of smoothing it back in so that it was nice and delicately joined together. Obviously this band is very skinny, so I want to be very delicate with the pressure that I'm using on the file so that I don't snap it again. Yeah, so that's, I would keep going with that for a bit um, to get it looking smooth again um, and properly joined. Um, another thing to say, which is very, uh, very granular, very particular, is that when you're sort of putting joins or adding material on, sometimes you can find that you get a little air bubble under the wax. It just looks like a tiny white blob. Um, and it's, so if you see one, you can, what you can do is sort of heat your tool and gently like put the wax in put the probe in and just like pop it um it's better if we don't have air bubbles in the wax um because it can like it could sort of make a little hole in the casting as we were when it turns into metal uh, i said with the other guys it's not it's not i don't it's not quite the same level of disaster as if there was air bubbles in clay and like exploding the whole kiln um, but it's just it can make a little sort of cavity in in your ring if you've got a large air bubble in there. So that's sort of that would be that would be that type of repair. Then you might find that as I was, what I said before is that you um, you can join any type of wax together. So you might have 
carved a ring and then carved this is a heart um, and then you might want to like stick them together um, it could be it could be that it's something in green wax that you're joining to blue wax or something for the um, modeling black wax that you're wanting to join onto the green wax or whatever it may be um, again it's just a case of controlling the melt so we're like using picking the tool that you think is most appropriate um, and putting it in the flame to heat it up um, then you just want to sort of very delicately melt uh, parts of your model and then hold it hold it in place for the melted wax to, to re-solidify. Really? So that you've got it joined? Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you melting both sides there? So both surfaces together or just one surface? And sometimes you can just do, sometimes it can be fine with just the one surface being, being melted um, and that can be enough to put them together. Um, Sometimes I can just, sometimes I can slice it through the two. Um, it, it does depend, but normally you should be able to do it with, with one. But I've just got, well, I, so that's, that's it joined. I just have them really close so that I can melt and then stick like straight away. Um, yeah. That, that um, when I was talking about that with the other guys, I, I, that sort of led me to talk about the sprue. So I'll just sort of say that again with you guys so that we've covered the same thing as the other guys. Um, as I say, I'm going to talk more about spruing next week. Um, but that essentially a sprue is joining, um, joining a wax rod or wax stick onto the model um, so that it gets ready for casting so that we can attach the sprue and then we would sprue onto the tree, get it ready. So it's the same sort of principle. It just gently melt, gently heat up and gently melt it and then push it on so that we've got it attached. The sprue, um, we would want the sprue to be attached to the thickest point. Oh, didn't go very well. Do that again. Yeah, we'd want the sprue to be attached to the thickest point on a, just a simple circle, like circle ring like this. It's fine. That's it joined. Um, this one's pretty messy. I would spend a bit of time cleaning up that sprue join so that it was joined properly and that all that, can you see all the, the pink on the back? I'd clean that up whilst it's in the wax because it's gonna be so much easier to clean it in wax than it is when it's in metal. Um, but so that's sort of, again, it's sort of a very, um, sort of slice and slice it and stick it is what we're is what we're aiming for using the hot wax. So yeah. Yeah. Have we got any? Have we got any questions? I have a question. Um. Yeah. Do the ring sizers, would we be able to just come up and borrow them if we we're in studio? Like, say on a Monday morning, because we can't come into the workshop, but we just wanted to size a few rings. Would we be able to just nip up and borrow them and take them back? Like, would we sanitize them and everything? The, this, these ones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I've only got two in the workshop. So I've, if it was just the one, um, then 
yeah, you could borrow as long as it sort of came yeah, back yeah. It as would soon just, as you were done with it. Yeah, I would just, it would literally just be to nip in just to use it so, because we can do everything else by ourselves basically, but just to use it quickly yeah. and bring it back. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would be fine as long as it come back. Yeah, that's fine. Ellie? Um, yeah. yeah. Question about, you said the thickest part of the ring, or the heaviest part of the ring. Yeah. Because you read to the ring, not to the design itself. So you wouldn't go anywhere near the heart shape. You'd, you'd do it at the bottom of the ring and keep the um, heart design fairly. No. Yeah. So yes and no. Um, obviously for the, for this one if i was screwing it like the heart is the thickest point so i want that sprue to be as close to if not on the heart as possible um obviously when we were when we're sprewing what we need to bear in mind is removing removing the sprue and it will if it is if anything's textured or yeah um anything it will it will move that so what i what i might what i may do is like if i would if i wanted the part to stay super clean i may pop it up here so that it's still nice and close but it's not gonna harm the heart if that makes sense yes. yep. but, but yeah we'll talk we can we can chat more about the sprewing um next week um as i was saying to the other guys the um we for this specific for this particular project you don't have to sprue um uh if you're if you're booked in the workshop and you can put a sprue on or if you've got hot tools then by all means go for it and do it um but because this is so quick um and we all need to share the flasks um if you hand in the models as, as they are, then I can um, I can do the sprewing up for you guys. But yeah, have you got any other questions? No. Um, what I wanted to say for next week, as I keep saying. Um, what, what I want you guys to do is to watch um, watch some videos that I put on Moodle. Um, and so we'll still have a Zoom um, like, like normal, um, but it might, um, what I'm aiming for is it to be more of, a, more of a question answer type thing. Once you've watched these videos, um, we're gonna basically talk more about the casting process, um, um, how it, turns from the wax to the metal. So on Moodle, there are three videos that I want you to watch. Um, one is how to sprue a wax tree. Second one is the investment process. And third one is the vacuum casting process. So that's all on there. It, it won't take you too long. I think it's about 15 minutes in total. Um, uh, I can send you, I can send you guys another link to the Moodle page just so that we've got it again. Um, and yeah, so if you watch them, but if next week and then we'll just have a chat about it. But yeah. If we've not got any other questions, then I'm going to leave it there for you guys. Yep. Just one question, Nelly. Yep. Um, you're looking at investment casting in a, a closed mold mold presumably it's yeah. all possible to cast an open mold if for example there's only one yeah. side for example you know this 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 sort of design that i've done here yeah will be flat flat on the back yeah is there any is there any advantage you know to doing it in a closed mold as opposed to an open mold Um, I'd say, I mean, if it was a, if it was an open mold, that would just be, yes, that technically can be done, but that, um, would be like a totally one off casting. Yeah. The thing is with the, with the molds that we, uh, with the investment casting, the way that we're doing it, it, it sort of lends itself to 
multiples um, like yeah. industrial, like being able to do it on a larger scale, basically. Um, if it was a one-off open world, it would just, like, it would be one-off. Other thing, it wouldn't necessarily give it a super flat flat as you're pouring the metal. It may be um, a bit lumpy or crinkled mm -hmm. um, and the, the back may take like a lot of filing and cleaning up more so than if it was just if it was cast and flat in its in its shape yeah i think yeah, yeah. As, as the question really was revolving around what i can do at home as opposed to coming in and actually doing right that, yeah um yeah i mean it would it would be using the it would be a different sort of type of process i'd probably say if it was i mean it may be sand casting um would be a way we could you could have an open mold but yeah the the mold like obviously the mold itself that you're pouring into needs to be heat proof as you're pouring in like a thousand degrees metal um so it's, it's not something that like your standard plaster mold would work it, w it wouldn't work is what I'm saying. so the the what you're pouring into normally the the amalgam the is not plaster it's something else is it um right. it, well it, it's a plaster base but it's got like silica um silica or silicon got yeah. something in it um, that helps it okay. with heat but yeah 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 I don't know if that answers your question much but yeah I'm just sort of trying trying through my mind alternatives yeah because the time scale is is it maybe that in the last couple of weeks of the project um, mm -hmm. After you're finished doing the the individual the casting um, time ones, is that I can spend time mm -hmm. actually making something. I can't mm -hmm. see. I can't even see the screen now. <laughs> can I get a rough? I um like a rough yay or nay if anyone's thinking of using the early casting date. I, I don't think I'll be ready to, to cast on that date. No, I don't think I'll be ready either. <laughs> okay. Really? Cool, well, it, it doesn't matter. Um, if, we're, yeah. if you are ready, then just drop something in. Um, if, you, if, we, if we have something made, we can just drop it into you. Um, and if we miss the yeah. first date, we get the second date. Can we drop in two items yeah. the second date? Yeah. Can you drop in? Sorry, say that one again. You went a bit crackled. Yes, yeah, sorry. Can we drop in two items for the second date? Yes, yeah. Nice yeah, so you can drop off two for the second lot. No bother. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. But cool. I will let you guys go now, for real. Um, right. And I will see you all next week. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.